Hello guys, NAMM Show 2018, my name is Chris and we are at the Paul Reed Smith booth. It's not even a booth, it's a, a giant room of wonders and beauties. Yes. Hi Paul. Hi, how are you? It's very, very nice. It took some time for us. Thank you very much. We're here with Brian Ewald too, our demonstrator. Hi Brian. Good nice to see you, you. Yes. Nice see you again. See you again. Yes. <laughs> so, what is this beauty right over here? It's called the MT-15, it's a Mark Tremonti. 15 watt amp, it's actually a professional piece of audio gear. If Brian plays a couple chords, just listen to things, just thunderous sounding. Is that in full power mode? Just turn I have no idea, I don't care. <laughs> it sounds good no matter which way it is. The thing sounds thunderous, right? In the low power mode, yeah. it just, it feels different. It feels fine, it's just, it squashes and compresses. So if you like that sound, if you want more of that give of a, of a like a, a, a sag, you can crank it up and put it in low power, and then you put it in the high power mode and it just gets punchy, you know? Uh, but even at quiet volumes, it just sounds, sounds massive. And the clean channel is gorgeous. All right, let's hear it. Uh, just flip this, or? And you can see it, look at yeah. that, blue now. note it sounds wonderful yeah. I can't take it it's too good I can't take. It. you need to stop you're killing it's me. nice it's nice it sounds gorgeous I actually like that it sounds like a super reverb without the mush yeah the optional 112 cabinet which is uh, vintage 30 loaded which is the what he voiced the amp around that's his his home base speaker which I think just matches perfect with this um, is you know the that same dimensions as the PRS closed back 112, but with the, the vintage 30 and a, and a uh, the different grill cloth. Kill, yeah, it's huge sounding for a small package too. That's why I wanted to ask. Of course, guitars, which is uh, that was a single coil pickup he was playing through. Yeah, and uh, they sound gorgeous. Yep, the two two singles and a humbucker, the Starla humbucker, which is splittable. Uh, so it does hum single single. I like this uh, center position instead of being the middle pickup. It's actually the outside too. Are, are these singing coils because they look really similar? The ones from the Vela or revoiced? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, not revoiced. Same pickups. I yeah. yeah. So I should not say, but I love this pickup really. This is like a Vela with a center pickup. But to me, I, and I have a Vela, and I absolutely love it. This has a whole different voice, and I don't know how much of it is the the different bridge probably makes a big difference. Guitar wise. There's the new Dusty Waring guitars. You've got the new Chris Robertson guitars. Um, Mark Tremonti's got a new SE Standard. 2408. Uh, there's left-handed guitars, finally, for people that play left-handed pianos. Um, <laughs> <laughs> they don't make left-handed pianos. They don't, yeah. yeah. Left-handed drum sets. Dude, same yeah. drum set, you just yeah, flip, it you're flipping around. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, it, the, pedal, the pedal goes backwards, you have to use your heel. <laughs> Oh my God, all right. Um, wow. We have a 24 right here. So it's oh. custom 24, but with the switching of the 408. So it wow. gives you ability to do, you know, bridge humbucker, neck single, vice versa. Um, just a, a different switching system, but on the, on the uh, classic custom 24. Paul, it's been a pleasure. Thank you very much. Hi guys again, we're still at the PRS booth and Brian will show us a little bit more of the details and some cool stuff he uh, really wants to uh, share with us. Uh, thanks for that. Thanks Absolutely, for yeah, yeah, thanks for having us. Uh, we just figured it out. We have um, a couple of common, you know, interests and uh, taste on guitars and sounds and we both really enjoy this single call with the uh, which um, Starla. The Starla, so the Starla pickup and the, the D-type pickups. So these two would be the same that you would find in a Vela. It's a great sounding bridge pickup. It pairs really well with these. Uh, doing a you know a hum single single, but to where your your levels. Um, uh, let me go to clean levels. You know, it doesn't it? You don't get that big yeah, drop off that know. you get a lot of like you know HSS kind of setups. Uh, but of course, it's still splittable. So you can do a single, single, single. Uh, wow. uh, and, uh, one thing I love about this is that the configuration, instead of it being just a typical five-way, in that middle position, yep. we get the outside two pickups. Right. So um, just a 
cool, like it gets those really spanky kind of sounds, yeah. uh, which I love. But the way this neck pickup. Just, I love the tone of that. And it's got all the, the body and throatiness that you, you, you expect from a neck pickup. Yeah but all the top end and air, yeah, you know, yeah. great single coil. What I love about it is that it's actually a little sweeter and softer than many, you know, S-type neck pickups yeah. because, you know, they tend to be a little too harsh for some amps yeah, yeah. or have way too too much bass, you know, in comparison to like the bridge pickup. And yes. this is somehow softer and like swims, I don't know, I cannot really describe it, but it's yeah. it has an own unique sound. It's very balanced, yeah. So this, this guitar, I, it's just, it feels like home to me. I, I love it. Uh, you know, it's and you think of it as an all mahogany body. It's not what you think of when you think of this kind of guitar, yeah, but it just yeah. works. I think the all steel bridge helps give it that that kind of classic sound. It sounds yeah. very different than the brass yeah. bridge, um, but uh, yeah, I've I've played one of these on a couple gigs and just um, just felt at home right away on it. Just uh, and I, I, you know, we talked a little bit about the amp uh, before. Uh, I love the clean sound of this amp. It just yeah. it's beautiful. Right now, I've got the the treble knob pulled out. Um, so that's which, the boost knob, right? The boost, yeah, so here is with it in. Um, and then I pull it out. That, that, you know, that's not just volume. No, it adds, it adds a little bit of gain on the front end, so it, 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 it gets a little bit more bite, but it stays sweet. It's yeah. not harsh. Um, more body to the to the notes and also uh, a little bit of breakup. Yeah. Now, I think it like with a guitar like this, I'd probably leave that out the whole time. Yeah. You plug in like you know the the D Dusty Waring or or or, or Chimanti's guitar, which has really high output pickups, it might work better to put, keep that in. Uh, the clean channel on this thing really holds together when you crank it. There's a lot of headroom on it and it stays clean all the way up, so it actually works as a great pedal platform too. Um, drive channel. Uh, uh, be before we change, yeah. can you show a couple of sounds? Like, for example, the fourth position is really interesting, but this was never an option on any other PRS guitars, right? Because mm -hmm. two well, of well, these that, were not being paired before. Exactly, yeah. right, yeah. So, um, so putting those two together, you get all that up. It's got that quackiness that, yeah. you know, position two. The way those two positions need to sound, it's got it. You know, yeah, I love it. Yeah. Awesome, and, awesome. Um, you know, back to the amp going into the to the lead channel. Right now, I've got the gain turned like way, way, way down. So, you know, it was really designed as a high gain amp, but it functions so well in that low gain. Like, it's really creamy and milky. Yeah. You know, it's not. Um, In many occasions, high gain amps are really struggling if you turn the gain down yeah, because they just they're sound like flat or yeah, dull yeah. or yeah, or or just the gain has a weird breakup to it. It yeah. just doesn't. It doesn't it's kind of harsh. Yeah, it doesn't yeah. feel smooth. Uh, um, you feel like it's just not in its zone where yeah. it needs to be. But even like with if I turn the gain up a little bit and get you know, I'll, you know, it's still. Just from a volume rollback, even with all that gain, like it still gets like all the character of the guitar comes through. It doesn't get masked. Um, I would I would highly recommend anybody who who assumes that this is geared for the high gain market to plug one in and try it. You will be shocked at how easy it is to play, forgiving, um, how great the clean channel sounds, um, how how great the lead channel sounds in low gain yeah. modes, um, yeah. how big it can sound. What I also love about this is, uh, and the Archon really does this well too, you can turn it to like uh, just a bedroom level, you know? Um, <laughs> And it has all the harmonic content. It sings. Where did that come from? Yeah, it just sings. But I mean, it's bare, like you could play that with somebody sleeping in the next room and they wouldn't even hear it. Yeah. But you know, you get it up here and it's like, and look, I barely turned it up, right? Yeah, yeah. 
it's got so much headroom. It's yeah. totally gigable. You could play it with the loudest of drummers, and even at 15 watts, you you'd easily be heard over. Oh, yeah. Yeah. 15 watts should not be underestimated, really not. No. Because that's a lot of lot of power if the, it's if it's wired properly. Right. And, and yeah. Efficient. You know, efficient uh, power section. The um, the it's got four. Uh, I'm sorry, eight and 16 ohm taps on the back, so you can run it into a whole variety of different cabinets. Uh, you want to show us um, any of the other new guitars? What you yeah, fancy? Yeah, check out the, uh, uh, the Dusty Wearing. Oh, yeah. So, uh, Dusty's guitar is the first one that was ever, the first signature model that's built on the, the CE platform. So there's been SE signature models. There's been, of course, Core and Private Stock signature models. So um, what, what he was, uh, the reason he decided to do that is he wanted US built, he wanted carved top, but he didn't want it to be priced out of the hands of his Many fans. Customers. Right, no, so no. so the CE platform was perfect. He was looking mm -hmm. at, at um, S2 and CE, but CE just really worked for what he wanted. So it's got a rock, the rock maple neck bolt on, went for the maple fingerboard, which is a really nice touch, especially with that satin finish. Yeah. Um, obviously the Floyd, that was kind of the, the heart of the idea. Uh, instead of doing a three-way toggle, like you would find on CE with a push-pull, yeah. he opted for a five-way blade okay. with the traditional PRS switching. And if you compared this to another CE, you'd see that the, the volume is typically around here. Yeah. So he kind of like repositioned that. those, which works really well for like hand placement, especially oh, yeah. using the Floyd. Floyd. Yeah, um, his, these are his signature pickups that are uh, made by um, uh, Mojo Tone. They're called Tomahawks. Um, Great sounding pickups, obviously do really well. They, you know, for the higher gain. But like, they just scream if you, yeah, like, you don't have to weird. try to. Yeah. I love the satin. I like the fact that, you know, the, the satin finish just soaks into the back of the mahogany. Um, and, you know, it's classic look. I love the, the, you know, the black, flat black on the, on the neck. Um, and these, just as all these satin finish guitars are nitro lac lacquered, right? Yeah. So the any any uh, PRS like S2 satin, um, any of the satin runs, uh, even just the satin neck on anything is just a thin layer of nitro. Wow. And um, the part of the reason that brings the price down also there's so uh, fewer process steps in the process of finishing, saves time, which then again you know turns out to be a, a more affordable product, which is great. Um, uh, the, I, I remember, I don't remember the exact numbers, but it's about one-tenth of the thickness. The satin finish is about one-tenth of the thickness of the finish of, of a typical like core PRS, which is already thin. Yeah. So, I mean, it's a very, very, very thin finish. Wow. Enough to keep moisture from going in the guitar. Yeah. Protecting um, the wood. Yeah, protecting uh, the wood, but. It lets it ring, you know. Yeah. Yeah, that's the satin guitars are that's and a win -win. They feel great. Yeah. You know, especially coming from Maryland where there's high humidity, you know, oh, and the yeah. necks get all sticky. Okay. Like, yeah, I, I love the satin finish. I would do this forever, and yeah, you know, yeah. <laughs> but well, next you know, time I'll come come over to Germany and visit you guys. Let us yeah, know, yeah. and uh, you know, we'll continue. Cheers, guys. Thank you, Brian. Thanks, Paul, and everybody. See you later. <laughs>